All right, there's been a lot of talk on the um, March on Washington. And I... It was interesting. I mean, Adam Kakash is the one setting it up. And, I don't know, Adam Kakash, I never disliked him. As soon as Alex Jones got involved, I definitely knew something was up. Uh, and, but yeah, just so you guys don't, those of you who don't know, Adam Kakash is leading a march in Washington into Washington, D.C. with a, a thousand, over a thousand armed people. And the police chief already said, like, no, if you go there, you're going to get arrested, and there's going to be a confrontation, and all this stuff. So this is why I'm making the video, because I see it as a bad idea. Now, I've been talking to these people who support the march, um, and I'm just going to read you something that they said. Hold on. There is no peaceful solution, dumbass. We have tried a peaceful solution. They will not hear us or even bother to listen to us because they do not care. Denying that is ignorance in itself. Okay. Let's stop there now. There is no peaceful solution. Yeah, we... I guess we will... Actually, we haven't really tried it. We are trying it. Tell me how it's failed. Gandhi freed over a billion Afri Indians. And he was facing the most powerful empire on the face of this earth. And he didn't pick up one gun. The British shot them. They beat them. They, they did a lot. He did not pick up one gun to stop them. Sure, India could have overthrew the British. I mean, a billion Indians versus, what, 60 million British? But they didn't. They went with noncompliance. And they beat the British. Because. And, I, you know, I'm just going to address this, what he actually said. It hasn't worked because the American people and people in other countries have not woken up yet. They're too distracted. And that's the truth of it. That's why it hasn't worked. But once we hit critical mass, a lot of people have been saying we're in that 10% margin of hitting critical mass. That's how well this information revolution has been going. But it hasn't worked because we don't have enough people on our side yet. And even the people that we do have on our side, we all fight with one another. We can't agree with each other for shit. We have a resource-based economy, anarcho-capitalist, we have people who want to assure the Constitution. We can't agree with each other. We fight each other. Alex Jones is disinformation. Oh no, he's not, which he is. But um, yeah, that's why I found a lot of problems with this. Because if you're going in, sorry, if you're going in to a place that's gonna be heavily fortified by police, you're getting people such as Alex Jones to, I mean, almost you could say lead the march from behind the scenes. He has been getting people riled up to fight for a while now. You just listen to his Y2K broadcast, and that should show you his real intentions. And if you're going to bring all these people in, you're going to end up in a confrontation. And a lot of these people Alex Jones has been hy hyping up, they want to go into a war. And people, Adam Kosh has said, um, if the police you know, do anything, we'll stand down. But, just basically what he has said, there is no peaceful solution, dumbass. We tried a peaceful solution and they won't 
hear us or even bother to listen to us. So this guy clearly heading towards violence. Later in this message he sent me. Oh wait. This is here. Yeah, armed revolts the only answer. There is no peaceful way anymore. We have tried that and tried and tried. We haven't tried. Remember, the military, the government can spend billions on a single bomb. That bomb only becomes a weapon when the ranks of the military are willing to use the bomb. Otherwise, the bomb's worthless. Just like all the weapons they have. It's worthless if the, if the government or if the soldiers do not use the bomb. You can send a soldier everywhere on earth, every last place, every last city, every last town. But there will only be a war if the soldiers are willing to fight the war. That's the point. That's why peaceful resistance will win. Because if you don't pay your taxes, they don't have any money to go buy bombs to drop on two-year-olds. No, they don't have the money for that if you didn't pay your taxes. That's why you have to wake people up. First, you have to have an ideological revolution. Then you have to tell people, don't pay your taxes, don't go in the military, boycott the military, boycott the banks, boycott the big corporations. That's how we're going to win this war. We're not going to win it by the sword. Especially not by the sword. And America can... This doesn't really have to do with what I'm talking about, but America can't be destroyed from outside, that's for sure. Destroying America from outside would be horrible. Any destroying any nuclear armed country from outside would be horrible. Would not end up good for anyone. A Russian army comes to America's doorstep. Oh, we got 170,000 nukes to set up. But um, this guy is saying, you know, I, and Alex Jones was saying, uh. That he he tried to do this before, but he didn't want any provocateurs into the event. Who do you think is going to provocateur this event? Alex Jones. That, that's who's going to do it. You just watch my Alex Jones deception. And speaking of non-compliance, that's why I made the documentary called Police and Military Stand Down. Go watch that. Because if we get the police and military to stand down, it doesn't matter how distracted the American people are. Without the police and military, there is no government. Government. There's a law is only a law when the police refer to that piece of paper that has been signed and they enforce it. That's the only reason a law is a law, because the police enforce it. If you don't if the police don't enforce it and they stand down, like we saw with the gun control as Every Utah sheriff said that they will not enforce federal laws if they come and try and take the guns from the people. That's that's what scares them. He was saying, oh, that proves... And this guy, I'm not going to mention his name. But he was saying, oh, that proves they're scared of us. And they're not scared of us. They're scared of us not complying. That's what they're scared of. They're not scared of you trying to get a violent revolution started okay they're not scared of that why would they be scared of that they have 2.6 billion rounds of bullets with buckshot hollow points and sniper rounds they have th a thousand fema camps across the united states they have thousands and thousands of military armored vehicles like we saw roll down on the streets in boston and watertown You know, denying that the government's not preparing for a civil war is ignorance. But denying that we can't have a peaceful solution has happened over and over and over. Gandhi is just one example. And he's a good example. But another one is Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela was called a terrorist by Ronald Reagan and Mar Margaret Thatcher. And he spent like 20 years in jail. And he still freed his people. And he still didn't take up any arms. 
He was basically living his whole life on a little island that's like Alcatraz to Africa. Just a little island for 20, 30 years. Good chunk of your life. For doing nothing. For peacefully protesting. And yet he still, what he did still worked. And last thing. For those of you who still really want to start a revolution. To fight. A revolution against this government, against this this military, we will have to be fighting a guerrilla war. Okay, that no doubt we will have to be fighting a guerrilla war at first. Now, guerrilla wars are usually only successful when you have the support of the people. You're not gonna have the support of the people when you are the one instigating it. You want to start a rebel group to defend your town? Go ahead. I'm okay with it. But when you go and attack a CIA headquarters or a military base or go and attack Washington, D.C., oh, no, no, no. I'm not for that. Think, if we started an armed conflict in the 90s when more and more and more and more people were asleep, would it be successful? No. That revolution would have been squashed already. And the truth movement would be even more demonized. We would be in a worse off situation than we are because people would be like, oh, crazy rebels trying to overthrow the government. They've been trying to do that since the 90s. And the government hasn't done anything to us yet. So what? We can tell the government will do something to us. They haven't yet. So why are you instigating it? That's the point. If you think this message is important and should be viewed by others, please share it. Share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter. Also, be sure to like and favorite the video. By doing so, it'll rise in listings and you'll have the opportunity to be viewed by others. Help us get the message out to the national and international stage. And also, please subscribe to this channel. The truth is full of lies.